course, he was a part of the uh, that little show that happened last night in Las Vegas as well. Yeah, the show did pretty well at her. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we drew a little bit more today. Let's get the official introduction. and Orange Cassidy share a lot of things in common, as weird as that sounds. I think the foremost of those being, they're both two of the hardest to, 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 to get a fix on in all of wrestling. Their styles are so weird, Dave. They are strange competitors. <laughs> Not easy to prepare for either one. Very oddball. I mean, does it? Not really. He is the IWTV Independent Wrestling Champion. He has held the title for 146 days and is attempting his 16th defense. Freshly squeezed. Or Jesse. Yeah! There we go. He won that title at Heavy Lives the Crown Beyond Wrestling. Worcester, Massachusetts on New Year's Eve. The last match to take place, actually, in 2018 was him winning that title from Hot Sauce Tracy Williams. He, in just five months' time, a little under five months, has almost usurped the total number of title defenses. I know this sounds insane. He is the most fightingest champion we've ever had. He is, he is uh, on fire, defending that title every chance he gets, plowing through the competition. As Bryce Rensburg holds the championship up high, your main event here at the Midwest Mixtape. New champ! I was about to say, yep, showing it to the challenger here. To the Alien, very weird. Usually they slap the belt. No, it's busting the head against it. It's a transfer to kinetic energy. I'm trying to channel some of the metallic composition of the belt. Nope. Art Bell is uh, looking down very proud. Will she win the title tonight? Three. What is she going to win? Oh! oh. Peace offer. That's nice to see. You like yes. to see that. Yes. She comes in peace. Kind of a symbolic opening to this contest here. I was not expecting. Well, didn't make it over the top rope there. Yeah. Almost. Almost. Got some height on it. Almost as much height as Frank the Clown got when he threw that. Yeah, and that one, yeah. it came close. I mean, doesn't really Bryce matter if it moves on. Bryce can. Elbow pads applied. Yeah, he slid that one on pretty effectively, actually. And, uh, all right, we're ready then. Opening bell. Here we go. Nice, nice, really tight, compact pre match there. Yes. Always like to see that. And a championship bout, they're getting right to it. Put the sunglasses on. That's going to be interesting to monitor that. That's always a sticking point in an Orange Cassidy bout. Oh, oh. she's made some sort of connection with Orange Cassidy. It's like watching, it's like watching Ray Apollo and Matt Bourne. That's exactly the same. I was just thinking that. It's like looking into a music. It's not like looking at Eric Friedel, Mr. Paul Duncan, that's the club in the U.S. Just because you got one made doesn't make you a doink. Into the pockets! Oh, go the hand. Oh, but she doesn't Stat have Lander doesn't have pockets. Oh, she, she doesn't know what to do except to roll him up! Oh, quick cover! Only two! Cassidy trying to win the psychological battle early. Oh, he sat on it! He almost stole one. Shoulder tackle from Chris Statlander. Did the glasses come? The glasses came off. They there. did, but his hands are still in the pockets. Oh. Um, more fair play. Like to see that. Good show, sports womanship, sports alienship, whatever. I mean, whatever. step over to the floor. He been hitting the ropes is overrated. Wrestling. I mean, he can take his time. He's the main event. He calls the shots. You know, the champion dictates the pace of a matchup. And Orange Cassidy knows this, but Statlander out to the floor. Yeah, she uh, 
She's not gonna let him out of anything easy, I think. And as I say that, he's not gonna, he's not gonna back down from his strategy. You know, there, there's some shenanigans you might say in an Orange Cassidy bout, but the reality is a lot of it is kind of strategic. He really breaks people mentally, I think. It's playing mind games with his opponent at times. Look at the, look at the speed of this lap he's taking, Dave. He's, he's got to run the 40 in like 4-4. That's NFL combine level Man. speed. And once again, the Elian to the floor. Oh, she's going under the ring. Oh, yeah, I, I think you're right. Cassidy is, uh, Bryce doesn't know where she went, I don't think. I don't know, I don't know if Orange Cassidy realized that she went underneath the ring. He may not care, to be honest. Well, it's true. He's gotten through this many title defenses thus far. Maybe taking it a little bit easy tonight. Hopefully he does not underestimate Chris Statlin. You gotta be careful with Cassidy because if he crawls under the ring after, he almost assuredly will fall asleep. That, that, that'll be the end of the <laughs> and match. And there she is right behind him. Oh! Bit of a wet willy. Bringing him back inside. <laughs> the hand's still in the pockets though. Ducks the clothesline, off the ropes he comes, hip toss, hands still in the pockets, back on his feet. Or oh, drag, and still in the pockets. She sweeps the legs, he kicks out. He sweeps her legs, hands still in the pockets, cover. And double kip up. Look at that. And a stalemate. Ricochet and Will Ospreay, your heart out. <laughs> Roll up. Hands came out of the pockets for that one, but only two. Smart had a good cradle there. Power slam from Statlander. Once again. Two. Only two. Very, very close. Quick pace all of a sudden. It was odd that we had that, that lethargy that we often see out of Orange Cassidy in the early stages. And all of a sudden, just that explosion of energy all at once. He knows when it's time to bring it to his opponent. The championship is at stake. He's really covering up. He's really it's covering great, up, yeah. Great effect there. Like a prize boxer. Elian is confused. <laughs> Trying to do some damage, but... And this may be a rope-a-dope strategy, actually. <laughs> Could be. Oh, went for that big boot in the corner, but nobody home. Jack and screw! Right across the second rope. Got it. Whiplash, too, right on the knee there. That, those ropes are for steel cables, folks. Yes. Not giant rubber bands, contrary to popular belief. To the top rope. But Statlander drives him into the corner. And a spine buster. Two. Yeah, she, she drug him out to the center of the ring. That was very smart. Didn't want him anywhere near the ropes. We've seen a few times today where being close to the ropes has saved people. Oh, she went for that axe kick. She likes to utilize that to end her matches. God, back to that knee though. Clutching that knee in pain right now. Yeah, and that is, it seems pretty clear to me that that is going to be the story here, is whether or not she can even compete or, or survive to just last long enough to have a fighting chance on that leg, which Orange Cassidy has really targeted. She's usually a very agile competitor. Soaring to the floor is Orange Cassidy. Collides with Statlander, bringing her back inside. The question is, if he does so much damage to that leg, Will she be able to pull off any of those athletic maneuvers? DDT off the top row. Like hooked, like hooked. Oh, only two. Very, very close. And that's a great point, Jake. So much of what she does is either kicks, that axe kick she likes to utilize, or things off the top rope. That leg's gone, forget it. She's gonna have to come up with a totally different strategy. And she's a relatively new wrestler. She's still relatively new to the wrestling business. She may not have quite the depth of knowledge and tools to pull out of that playbook. So uh, she's gotta be real careful. Oh God. Went for that Enzigiri, but ducked and twisting away on that bad leg now is the champion, Orange Cassidy, pulling her away from the ropes back to the center. Able to, able to pull forward just to escape. Picks her up. Oh, goodness. Dumps her with a Michinoku yeah, driver. Three. He's no! Oh! Statlander kicked out of the Michinoku driver. But look at Orange Cassidy. He flipped right back into that ankle lock variation. And if you look, he's got that knee pulled forward as well. I actually think he may have been better in the previous position, but he, he's really got that ankle. Statlander trying to make it to the ropes if she can, reaching for the bottom rope, and she's got it. Forcing a break of the hold. 
Yeah, you rarely see the champion wrestle like that. He went straight from one thing into another. That's not really Orange Cassidy's style. He is treating this as a very serious title defense. Maybe, maybe he sees this as his biggest challenge. I'll be honest. I do. She, like I said, she's been the number one contender effectively for three months now. Uh, does she have 100% in that leg, though, to try to hit something to the floor here? She's going to take a risk, uh, but she can't hit the ropes. Doesn't have the mobility due to the damage done to the knee thus far. Yeah, I mean, she can't even stand, let alone do anything off those ropes. A forearm shot knocks Orange Cassidy back to the floor. Don't need your legs to knock somebody out with a forearm. Going after that leg again. Trying to kick her way free of his grasp, she does. This, and oh, moonsault off God. the apron to the floor. A one-legged moonsault off the apron to the floor, just with that single free leg. Bringing him back inside the ring, needs to follow up here. Will Statlander become the new champion here tonight in Chicago? Crowd chanting for Chris Stat. To the top rope. Nobody home on the cross body and back to that ankle lock, twisting away on the leg. Yeah, and Bryce is right there checking him. I, I think he's thinking about, you know, this could be close to permanent damage stoppage territory if he's not careful. Trying to kick her way free with a good leg. And able to free herself from his grasp. On the shoulders. I can't believe she got him up. Yeah. I, yeah. Fought his way free, though. That leg gave out. All the way. Dead center. Fold it up. Two and three. No! Oh, so close, but Bryce was in the perfect position to see that she was able to kick out at the last split second. We've seen a lot of close calls today. That was the closest, and it, it shows just how badly Statlander wants to walk out of here with the Independent Wrestling Championship. But she's also, I mean, she may not walk out of here at all, actually, at this rate, with the condition of that leg. And she should avoid the butterfly pile driver, if at all possible. Absolutely, we've seen a few of those. Shot right there from Orange Cassidy takes Statlander off her feet. I just love that bottle of orange juice on the canvas in the middle of the ring. That's interesting. It is dead center. And she's got him up this time. Holds on to the wrists. Able Walk to, into the center of the ring. Trying to work out the kinks in that leg. Dumps oh. him. Chest and face first to the canvas off the ropes. Look that axe kick. She, she gets it. She got it. Dead Cover. center. Two, three. Ooh, so close. But he got his shoulder up. And as you notice, it, even as effective as that was, as close as that was, that pain in that leg, she had no ability to even try to follow up. She went straight to clutching her leg. You gotta wonder if that was literally the last bit she had. Oh no. And he's, oh yeah, he's, he's got the OJ. He's got the OJ. But another X kick. That's two. Not going for a cover, looking to follow up with something big here. But Orange Cassidy avoids it. And it gave out again. Oh, oh he went the, for it. Orange juice. Oh wait. Tombstone position. Leg hooked. Leg hooked. She's got both of them. Oh! Stuck the landing. Cradle, two. She ah! got him. We've got a new independent wrestling champion in Chris Statlander. Oh my God.